So here's the thing. Time travel is easy. It just only works in one direction and it's pretty slow. And yeah, you're doing it right now. But what if rather than doing it a second at a time, or even zipping into the future by bending space and time to your will, you just put everything on pause and you press play again at some point in the future. Yep, today on BritLab we are talking cryonics. Not cryogenics, cryonics. Cryogenics is the study of any material at extremely low temperatures, whereas cryonics refers to the freezing of humans until an undefined point in the future when it might be possible to resuscitate them. Cryonics is much cooler than cryogenics. Sorry, I couldn't resist the pun. I will chill. Sorry. The first person to be put into deep freeze was Dr. James Bedford, a psychology professor from the University of California. He died of kidney cancer in 1957, and after being put on ice, he was re-examined in 1991. He was deemed to be in pretty good nick, apparently looking younger than he did at the time of his death, and if he were resuscitated successfully today, he'd technically be 131 years old. So is it as simple as putting someone in the freezer, like some discounted fish fingers that are too near their sell-by date? Not exactly. Here's how you do it. First up, get the money together. If you are really optimistic and think that the scientists of the future will be able to rebuild you from just your brain, you only need a paltry $80,000. If you want to store your whole body though, you'll be looking at a whopping $200,000. Oh, and don't forget this next bit, on top of that, you'll need to cover the membership fee of around 700 bucks a year until they thaw you out and bring you back to life. Second, you'll need to be a savvy investor. Now, you could pick Alcor, the Life Extension Foundation, the American Cryonics Society, Cryonics Association of Australia, CryoCare Foundation, CryoScan, Cryonics Society of Canada, Rajas Tali Cryonics, International Cryonics Foundation, TransTime. Yeah, there are loads of companies out there who are willing to turn you into a corpsicle. The challenge is betting on which ones will still exist by the time your cure rolls round. Third, well, you just need to die, like fully die, not just be deathly sick, because it's actually illegal to free someone who has not been declared legally dead. In the US, where cryonics is big business, brain death is one of the main things used to pronounce legal death. And there's the rub. Brain death is one of those things scientists are not sure we're going to be able to overcome anytime soon. Anyway, if we do get past that pretty big hurdle, and here's an important bit of advice, make sure all your bits stay intact. No one can help you if you fall into a meat grinder or get squashed by a falling piano. Okay, so you're newly legally dead. What happens next? Well, time is of the essence. So an emergency response team from the Cryonics Company will leap into action as fast as possible. When a human body dies, the body immediately begins a rapid process of decomposition, where every cell in the body begins to break down. I have done a pretty gross film uncovering that whole gruesome process in a previous BritLab film, and I'll put the link to that below definitely worth a watch. Now, the faster you can be frozen, the better. First, your body is packed with ice and injected with an anticoagulant called heparin to stop your blood clotting while the experts get you back to the facility. Once in the lab, the real freezing begins. The thing is, if they just dumped you into something extremely cold, say liquid nitrogen, the water in your cells would suddenly freeze and expand, causing all sorts of tissue damage. Just think of all the delicate blood-carrying capillaries in the brain and you can quickly see why that's a bad idea. So, to counteract this, the teams will first remove the water from your body and replace it with a cryoprotectant, a glycol such as ethylene or propylene. This process is called vitrification because at low temperatures these protectants become a smooth solid, not crystalline like water tends to get when frozen. Right, so you've spent all this money and you've gone through all this work to preserve your dead body. It's time to address the question you probably should have asked beforehand. Will we ever reach a point where scientists can actually bring you back to life? Dunno is the most honest answer. Cryonics is a pretty theoretical field right now. Saying that, 150 people have taken the icy plunge and over 1,000 more are signed up to undergo the cryonic procedure. Well, the first half at least. However, despite the enthusiastic sales pitches from the companies, there is a lot of doubt in the scientific community. 
cryobiologist Dr. Dayon Gao from the University of Washington says that there is no scientific foundation supporting cryonics at this time. And there's no example yet of any animal being revived from this artificial process either, though experiments with lowering body temperature in pigs and dogs have replicated suspended animation for a short time. Other scientists point to the risks of the brittle body fracturing into pieces during the warming process. The fact that we can't tell if memory will be preserved in the brain if the neurons suffer damage. And the all-important niggling issue, how to reverse brain death in the first place. So, yeah, it's an expensive gamble on the science of the future. But hey, you know what they say? You can't use your money once you're dead. But if you do wake up in the future, beware the angry great-great-grandchildren bearing huge cryonic bills. Oh, and enjoy your hoverboard.